The carpal tunnel is an anatomical structure in the wrist, formed by the wrist bones on the bottom and sides. And a strong fibrous ligament, transverse carpal ligament, on top. It is a narrow passageway in the wrist, through which several important structures pass, including tendons and median nerve. The median nerve is essential for both sensory perception and controls the movement of the fingers in the hand. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a medical condition that affects the hand and wrist. It occurs when thickening from the lining of irritated tendons or other swelling narrows the carpal tunnel and compresses the median nerve. This compression can lead to a variety of symptoms and discomfort in the hand. Symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome may include numbness, tingling, burning, and pain, primarily in the thumb and index, middle, and ring fingers. This often wakes people up at night. Occasional shock-like sensations that radiate to the same fingers. Pain or tingling that may travels up the forearm toward the shoulder. Weakness and clumsiness in the hand, this may make it difficult to perform fine movements, such as buttoning your clothes. Dropping things, due to weakness, numbness, or a loss of proprioception. Proprioception is awareness of where your hand is in space. In most cases, the symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome begin gradually without a specific injury. Many patients find that their symptoms come and go at first. However, as the condition worsens, symptoms may occur more frequently or may persist for longer periods of time. Nighttime symptoms are very common, because many people sleep with their wrists bent. Symptoms may awake you from sleep. During the day, symptoms often occur when holding something for a prolonged period of time with the wrist bent forward or backward, such as when using a phone, driving, or reading a book. Who is more likely to get carpal tunnel syndrome? Carpal tunnel syndrome is often the result of a combination of factors that increase pressure on the median nerve and tendons in the carpal tunnel rather than a problem with the nerve itself. Sometimes no single cause can be identified. Combination factors may include Anatomy Some individuals may have a smaller carpal tunnel or a predisposition to carpal tunnel syndrome due to their wrist anatomy. This can make them more susceptible to compression of the median nerve. Repetitive hand use Frequent, repetitive hand and wrist movements, especially those involving flexion or extension, can increase the risk of carpal tunnel syndrome. This is common in jobs or activities, such as typing, assembly line work, or playing musical instruments. Forceful hand use. Activities that involve forceful gripping or use of vibrating tools can also contribute to carpal tunnel syndrome. This is because such actions can increase pressure on the median nerve. Medical conditions. Certain medical conditions can increase the risk of carpal tunnel syndrome. These include diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, hypothyroidism, and obesity. These conditions can affect nerve health and increase the likelihood of nerve compression. Pregnancy. Pregnancy can lead to fluid retention and hormonal changes, which may increase the risk of carpal tunnel syndrome in some women. Symptoms often improve after childbirth. Wrist injury. A wrist injury, such as a fracture or sprain, can cause swelling and inflammation in the wrist area, leading to compression of the median nerve and the development of carpal tunnel syndrome. Hormonal changes. Changes in hormonal levels, such as those associated with menopause or the use of oral contraceptives, may increase the risk of carpal tunnel syndrome in some individuals. Genetics. There may be a genetic predisposition to carpal tunnel syndrome, as it can run in families. Sex Women are three times more likely than men to develop carpal tunnel syndrome. Age Carpal tunnel syndrome is more common in older adults, as the tissues in the wrist can degenerate and become more susceptible to compression with age. How is carpal tunnel syndrome diagnosed? Your doctor will ask about your general health, medical history and your symptoms, then perform some physical examination and tests, which include Tinel's sign and Phelan's test. Tinel's sign. Your doctor may tap along the median nerve on the palm side of your wrist and hand to see if it causes any tingling into your fingers. Phelan's test. 
your doctor may ask to bend and hold your wrists in a forced flex position for 30 to 60 seconds to test for numbness or tingling in your hands. He may also do other examinations to check for weakness or atrophy in the muscles around the base of your thumb. In severe cases, these muscles may become visibly smaller. Tests for carpal tunnel syndrome. Your doctor may order electrophysiological testing for your nerves to assess the functionality of your median nerve and assist in identifying any excessive pressure on it. Electrophysiological tests may include nerve conduction studies and electromyography. These tests will help your doctor determine the severity of your carpal tunnel syndrome, whether the median nerve is compressed in other locations, whether other nerves are affected or whether you have a medical condition such as neuropathy affecting your nerves in addition to carpal tunnel syndrome. Other tests may include ultrasound scan to evaluate the median nerve for signs of compression, x-rays to exclude other causes for your symptoms such as arthritis and fractures. An MRI can also help to determine if there are problems with the nerve itself such as a tumor or scarring from an injury. If you like the content, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Treatment. Treatment can be non-surgical or surgical. If diagnosed and treated early, the symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome can often be relieved without surgery. If your diagnosis is uncertain or if your symptoms are mild, your doctor will recommend non-surgical treatment first. Non-surgical treatments, bracing or splinting. Wearing a brace or splint at night prevents wrist bending during sleep and reducing pressure on the median nerve. Using a splint during daytime activities that worsen your symptoms can also be beneficial. Nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Anti-inflammatory medications such as ibuprofen and naproxen can help relieve pain and inflammation. Nerve gliding exercises. Your doctor or therapist may recommend specific median nerve gliding exercises, which help the median nerve move more freely within the confines of the carpal tunnel. Steroid injections. Corticosteroid, like cortisone, is a potent anti-inflammatory agent that can be injected into the carpal tunnel. These injections often relieve painful symptoms or help to calm a flare-up of symptoms. Surgical treatment. If non-surgical treatment does not relieve your symptoms or provides only temporary relief, your doctor may recommend surgery, which is based on the severity of your symptoms. Physical exam findings response to non-operative treatment, and results of testing. The surgical procedure, performed for carpal tunnel syndrome is called carpal tunnel release, or carpal tunnel decompression. This procedure can be done as an open procedure, through an incision in the palm and wrists, or it may be done as an endoscopic procedure through a small keyhole incision. The surgeon will perform this procedure with an endoscope which is a device contains tiny camera and surgical instruments at the tip. In both procedures the transverse carpal ligament will be cut to relieve pressure on the median nerve. At the end of both procedures the incision will be closed with sutures. Stitches will be removed in 10 to 14 days. After surgery, the ligament may gradually grow back together in a lengthened fashion, but there will be more space in the carpal tunnel and pressure on the median nerve will be relieved. Thank you for watching. Please check out the links in the description below for additional information and resources. Also don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this in the future. Thanks again for tuning in.